My entry into wildlife photography was pretty weird. I've been a um, commercial photographer in Los Angeles for over three decades. And in that time, I've uh, done fashion photography, um, a lot of editorial photography for magazines. And then my last uh, big gig was a staff photographer for NBC Universal. Did that for many years. And then that all came to a screeching halt uh, during COVID and I could no longer work. So at that point, I began going out and, and hiking every day. And a friend of mine happened to have a Sony super telephoto lens that he loaned me and I started taking that with me and I began photographing wildlife. I had never done it before, but um, knew quite a bit about working a camera. So um, I picked it up pretty quickly and began posting those pictures online on different social media sites. And within a year, I got a call from the National Park Service and they had seen some of my pictures and they invited me to come to the Big Island of Hawaii and shoot a project for them um, documenting the five most endangered birds. We found all the birds, we photographed all the birds, which they had been after pictures for years but they were all biologists, scientists, rangers. They weren't photographers. I even got all the birds in flight, which they were thrilled about. And those pictures were widely distributed. And before I knew it, people were calling me about doing wildlife assignments. So my motto is more animals, fewer humans. So we look for those places. And um, there's just nothing I enjoy more. And so I'm at this weird point in my career where I kind of don't want to shoot movie stars and supermodels and CEOs and athletes anymore. I'd rather be in the woods photographing animals. And that's exactly what I've been doing for the last three years. All right, let's talk about the gear that goes into these cases. So these are the pieces that I take on a big wildlife trip. And first and most important for me, this is the Sony A1 and the 400 2.8 G Master lens. And this lens is absolutely indispensable. Nothing else can do what it does. Um, I have shot so much in the rainforest and different jungle environments, and the light there is crazy low. People just don't realize it. But even on the brightest, sunniest day, in Costa Rica, for example, 2% of the sunlight that's above the canopy gets to the forest floor. So it's dark. So it's like trying to shoot action pictures in your living room. This lens actually makes that possible. I call it the king of the jungle. So I take a second Sony A1 with the 70 to 200 2.8. This is the G Master version two. And this lens does a couple of different jobs for me. Um, it gives me a shorter focal length, of course. And what I find is that when things get in close to you, that's where a zoom lens is really, really critical, much more so than a fixed prime lens like this one, because then I've got all the options for framing up my subject the way that I want to. I can get more context, I can get more of the environment into the picture with the animal using this shorter lens. And this lens also serves as my macro lens. The close focus abilities and the magnification of this lens works really, really well for photographing small things like frogs, snakes, bats, little perched birds you can get close to, things like that. Fantastic lens. And then the third camera that I take is a Sony a7C with the new Sony 20 to 70 millimeter zoom. And I use this lens for everything else that I really can't cover with those. It's a fantastic landscape setup. I use it for shooting trees and scenic kinds of things. You can easily shoot inside of a land cruiser or a boat or a bus any other kind of vehicle, any kind of an enclosed tight space. And this lens does a fantastic job of that. 
plus it's small and it's light. And one of the things that I'll point out is I don't change lenses in the field. I have found that that's just not a good idea. In places like Africa, um, what you'll find is that no matter how careful you are, you're going to get dust inside the camera. It's going to be all over your sensor. You're going to be cleaning it all the time. It degrades the image quality and it's just a pain to deal with. So by keeping a lens on a camera and then bringing a camera for each lens, you completely eliminate that. And it's a lot faster. You don't miss shots because you're changing from your big telephoto prime to your zoom lens. You've got a camera on each one and it's ready to go. Camera strap, of course, the mighty Black Rapid strap works fantastic. I put quick disconnect connectors on all my straps. Goes right in to the tripod foot, comes right out. This is a system that was developed by the US military for special forces troops. People sometimes ask, is this thing really secure? Well, soldiers use this to secure the rifle that their life depends on. They trust it. And I've have found it's been very reliable, very trustworthy. Lightweight carbon fiber tripod, very important. With a lightweight aluminum head, it keeps the whole rig small and very portable. For me, I bring both the Sony teleconverters, 1.4 and 2X. That lets me turn my 400 millimeter lens into a 560 millimeter f4 or an 800 millimeter f5.6. Fantastic. Memory cards, of course. I have a lot of Think Tank products that I use. Think Tank card wallets. I use the Sony Tough CF Express Type A cards. They're super fast. These just make sense for me. If you're shooting a camera like the Sony A1, this camera is built for speed. Putting an SD card in there, for instance, which it will take, it has CF Express Type A and SD card slots in the camera, two of each. But the camera will then, the speed gets dumbed down to the speed of that SD card. So, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me to buy the fastest camera that you can and then use a slower, albeit cheaper, card. These guys keep the throughput of the data. It's very, very fast. Nothing's going to slow you down. Okay, so let's talk about how you get all of this equipment to a remote location and on and off planes and vehicles and boats and land cruisers and Jeeps and whatever else you might have to deal with when you're going um, on a trip. So the concept for me for packing revolves around the cube. This is the camera cube. And it's basically just a foam box. And the particular one that I like, it's made by Think Tank, MindShift, and it's part of their Elite 45 backpack. Okay, so the camera cube starts out in the rolling case, because this is what I'm gonna take through the airport. And all of this gear fits inside. And it all fits inside the cube and it's safe and secure. All right. And then once I get to my location, my backpack that has been traveling in my big checked rolling suitcase, that comes out. And now, the camera cube moves into the backpack. And now I can strap all of that gear on and carry it into the field to any remote location. And one of the things that I've noticed happens all the time now on airlines is you're ready to board the plane and then you get the dreaded announcement. This plane is completely full and there's not gonna be enough room in the overhead bins for all the bags. And that's, I find that's generally a moment of panic 
for a photographer because your case with all your prized equipment that you're going to need to work with and to make pictures, they want to take that away from you and check it. And that's a non-starter for most photographers. So the cube system has, gives me a backup plan and I've used it a few times. And what happens is if I can't talk them out of the idea of checking my bag, what I can do, pull out the camera cube. I give them this case, which is now empty, have at it. And I let them check this, they gate check it. I'm gonna get it back at the end of the flight, at the end of the runway, but I carry this on. This is so small, it can fit under the seat in front of me. They can't argue about that. Okay, then let's talk about the other bag that's part of the system. So that's the big rolling suitcase. This is the case that gets checked. And inside of this goes all of my big, sort of awkward, cumbersome items. That means a tripod. That means hiking boots, um, water bottles, things like that. And then maybe most importantly, the backpack, which is going to carry my camera cube once I'm in country to my destination. That also goes in here. It's empty, so it collapses down. It's pretty flat, doesn't weigh very much. And he goes right inside there. So now in this bag, there's nothing that is particularly fragile or breakable or expensive. And so I don't worry too much about this. And it can go into checked bags and I'm done with it. All of the stuff that's really mission critical, if this never showed up, at my location, and that's happened too. I've got everything that I really truly need to work is in this case that I'm keeping with me. So let's talk about the last bag that I bring. And that is this bag, and this thing is just utterly awesome. This is the Tenba DNA 16 Pro laptop bag. I guess they probably call it a messenger bag. But this is what I use to carry a laptop, of course, so I can back up my work and edit on location. And it carries all kinds of other stuff too. Noise canceling headphones, spare set of glasses, very important. If you wear glasses and you break them on day one of your trip, that's a bummer. Nice to have a backup of those. And I carry things in here like battery chargers, um, flashlights, all kinds of little odds and ends. And the other thing about this bag that's really awesome is that if you need a camera bag when you get to your location and you don't want to carry your big backpack, you don't want to roll around this case, this thing is just absolutely fantastic as a shoulder bag. It will easily hold a camera body and a 70 to 200 millimeter lens a 24 to 70 and a 16 to 35 all in this bag. You take out the other stuff and there's your shoulder bag, which works just great. Um, I get all of my gear from Sammy's camera and they have been a fantastic partner and resource for me for many, many years. Um, I like to go to Sammy's Pasadena. If you go there, ask for Jason, tell him I sent you. He loves that because I send him people on a weekly basis, I think. Um, and they carry all of this gear that I use, plus anything else that you might need. And it's a great place to go and hold it in your hands, right? If you're gonna buy a camera, it needs to feel right in your hands. If you're gonna buy a lens, you need to know that, yeah, I could carry this, this would work for me. So that's a place where you can go, as opposed to just online, you can go in and talk to somebody that knows the gear, is knowledgeable about it, has experience with the gear. Um, and those guys, I have found that one of the things 
I never really thought about, but they have the benefit of feedback from lots of customers that buy the gear. People buy it, they come back, they tell them, you know, how much they love it, how, you know, how well it worked for them, or they tell them things they're having an issue with. And then the Sammy's folks can suggest something might work better for you. So it's, it's a great place to go and do that kind of shopping and that kind of research. So what I would say uh, to anybody, if you're interested in wildlife photography, um, I just, I don't know anything more fun. It's just fantastic to be out there. Um, and even on the days when I go out and I come back and I, I, I don't have pictures that I'm excited about, it's still worth it. I just, it's so wonderful just to be out in nature and to just have that connection with it. And if you do get pictures, that's gravy, right? And then you've got something exciting that you can share with other people. And the more that you learn about it, I think the more you're gonna wanna do it because it really is, it's kind of addictive. Um, being able to have those kinds of experiences and those kind of connections with animals and birds and the natural world. I, I, I don't think anything but good can come from that. And it's just such a wonderful antidote sometimes to living in the city and, and uh, our day jobs and all the things that we have to do, um, the, the routine things that, that we need to do. But that's a way to just sort of get away from it and take a little vacation. And you don't have to get on a plane and fly halfway around the world to do that stuff. I love to do that stuff, but you can do this very, very close to home. Do a little bit of research, you'll find that there's areas you'd never thought about where you can go and photograph wildlife. And for me, it, it is, it's kind of a spiritual thing. Um, I just love the way that being out there makes me feel. And when I do come home with pictures and I'm excited about them and I wanna print them and I wanna share them with other people, that's, there's just nothing better than that. Um, I'm working on book projects. I'm working on projects with various conservation groups. That's a wonderful thing it, because I feel like I'm not only doing this, this awesome thing that I love to do, but if my work can somehow feed into some of these conservation efforts, what could be better than that, right? So I'm actually promoting something that's good for the world. And I'm having a great time doing it. And that's, those are some of the reasons that, uh, that I do it and I'm gonna keep on.